So, continuously variable transmissions, or CVTs, it could be argued that I have a bit of an obsession with them. And that's because, from my point of view, if you can get a really good CVT, then you can get more out of your wind turbine. The thing about wind turbines is if the blades spin too fast, well, they can destroy your generator because they're beyond the capacity of the generation. And if you can slow them down when the wind is too high, then you can continue to generate and, of course, get more use out of your wind turbine. And here, I'm thinking of something like the Harmony Wind Generator, which is a furling mechanism. It's really very cool. But CVTs are indeed a little bit of an obsession. And they're basically, actually, pretty simple. Perhaps the simplest one is the disc CVT. You essentially have a big disc and you put a driving wheel on the edge. When you turn the driving wheel, of course, it will spin that disc at a certain rate. And the rate is the ratio of the diameter of the uh, driving wheel to the diameter of where you've put it. So if I drive that driving wheel in, that diameter, effective diameter, gets smaller and so this will spin faster the nearer that driving wheel is to the centre and slower the further away it is. And of course this is used a lot in things like lawnmowers and scooters. It's a well-known CVT. It's basic, it's simple and it works with only one real problem. It works on friction. The driving wheel has to have friction against the driven plate, otherwise there's no grip. And of course friction isn't that great. It loses a lot of energy through heat and the transmissions aren't actually very efficient. They win out because they're super cheap, super easy, super reliable, but not very efficient. And so lots of CVTs have been designed on that basic wheel-on-wheel -wheel principle using various mechanisms, including uh, belts, ratchets, levers. We've done a lot on levers to get that effect so that we can have it run a variable transmission and they've all got their various downsides. What would be really great is if it didn't run on friction, it was always in contact and we could vary the output speed by changing that distance that we talked about. Now this is a swash plate. You find them used in pumps. It's basically a disc set at an angle and as you rotate the disc of course it acts a bit like a cam and you can use that to change rotary motion into linear motion. You may think it works on friction, but it doesn't. Because a disc is at an angle, when the disc rotates, then this bit comes underneath the actual pin and it's shoving the pin up. The rollers at the bottom is only to make it glide over. It's actually not a friction drive. It is, in fact, an all-contact push, if you like. Now, if we could adapt that simple swashplate-driven design into a CVT, well, I think we'd have a pretty awesome CVT because it wouldn't be relying on friction. It would always be in contact, a little like a cam, but it wouldn't require ratchets like cams do, and there wouldn't be a drive, bol uh, drive belt or gears involved. So, it would be extremely simple to make. It would get rid of the problem with friction, and it would be pretty awesome. If only there was something like that, because I like saying that because of course you can do that. And here is a drawing of a device that should be able to do that. The actual device came from this book, which runs to about four volumes and is available free from the Internet Archive. So, of course, I'll put a link to that in the description below, should anybody want to look at it. The drawing itself came from Thang 01046, and that's another great resource, and I'll put a link to his channel, because so often, when you're asking a question about a mechanism, then looking through all of that stuff can answer, has this been done before? And all you really need to do then, of course, is draw a copy, print it, see if it works, and then how are we going to improve it? So our next job is to draw that up in Tinkercad and to print it out. And that's my Tinkercad drawing of the device. Of course, I will put this on Thingiverse, should anybody be interested in it, it's there to download and use. But the two essential parts are this cone-like structure here and the swash plate. And what happens, of course, is there's a roller on the top, as you saw in the drawing, and the roller will press onto that swash plate. As we turn the roller, the roller will make this travel around like that, and of course it creates a rotation at the centre. 
To capture that rotation, we have this, which is just a universal joint. So we drop the block into the centre of the horseshoe, feed in the pin, and there's a couple of slides attached to that long arm either end, because those slides drop in here. <laughs> there you go, like that. That feeds through the cone, like that. And as the roller travels around, of course, it creates a rotation in this centre where the rotation is changed. Now, as the roller is being driven round in a circle, that rotation is slower. So it get a slower rotation out of here. Just like in the disc CVT, but this time, instead of using friction, what it's doing is pressing downwards, so it's not a friction drive anymore. We can change where that goes by changing the effective position of the roller. And we do that by shoving this up and down. As that gets shoved up and down, it changes the angle of the disc, which changes the amount of travel and so creates, oh, so creates a CVT. So for the roller, we've got this cradle, pin and roller, and it has a clip that goes in the end. Clearly the roller goes in the cradle, we slide the pin through, and put the clip on. The top section, we use this, and there's a small plug that goes in there, it glues in place. It's done that way, so I don't get a load of support having to be printed here. This bit gets a spring on it, and the spring I just got from a bag of springs, and push it through so it's got a little bit of spring to it, and then there's a gear with a little indentation, and that glues on the top like that. And then we join that roller and that rod up with this rod here, and obviously put the top cage on. And then when we turn the input gear, it does what it's supposed to. It wobbles this plate and drives that, and of course we can change that with the selector on here, and shove that up to change the gear ratio. Now I looked at this, because a chap called Marco Vincio asked me to, he asked if this would be possible, and I thought it might be, but when I found the mechanism I thought, well there you go. Now I've printed this off just pretty much as is actually, but there are some things that I would change about it because the angle between the roller and the plate obviously changes as you change that position because the whole thing moves up. This uh, cone's a fixed angle, so it's kind of an approximation. What we'd probably do, instead of having a roller, is, well, make a sphere, something like that, which would make it much, much easier, I think, to keep that contact. But there we go, a CVT, no gears, based on levers with a swash plate that doesn't use friction. I don't know how efficient that would be, but it's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.